My friends, we have a problem, I think. Uh, this is what happens when you have activists who, who infiltrate uh, our gaming areas and say that they're gamers and that they want to make a game, but then the game is just their political ideology. Now you're saying, I'm sure you're saying, John, you're just assuming, right? You're, you're, you're assuming and maybe you shouldn't assume. Maybe you don't know what the people who made this game were, who, what they wanted to tell. Uh, but my friends, that's where you're wrong because the people who created the game told us exactly what they wanted and wh what the game was inspired by. When you hear it, oh, when you hear what this, the game was inspired by, your eyes, you'll roll your eyes so hard you'll get dizzy. Uh, that's how, how, how bad it is. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to try to remain more level-headed this because... This is just stupid and ridiculous. It really is. This is... This is why activists shouldn't be a part of the gaming, uh, you know, gaming. They've taken over the gaming journalism. They've taken over the companies. And then they create crap like this for the 1% of people who think like they do. So, as soon as you see the art for it, so we have strong, powerful, black female shaved side of the head. How many times have we seen that with the, you know, over the side? How many times have we seen this? We have Cuck just sitting there just by himself observing like what he's used to. Overweight Hispanic or something. Non-binary, I'm sure. We got a Zimzer. We've got Gwen Stacy up there for some reason. We have right here. I'm sure strong, sassy, gay black man. Also, there's a robot. So, you can tell that uh, there's clearly an agenda being pushed here. But you're like, but John, the, the characters don't prove anything. Again, the creators say exactly what this was inspired by. But, the wokest game ever, which <laughs> I disagree... Yeah, I, I don't think it's for the wokest game ever. It's probably one. <clears throat> um, I played Validate. Uh, it's on my channel. It's one of those like dating sim type things, but everyone is either overweight and ugly, and they're all diverse and gay and this and that. I played the demo and I barely got through it. That's how bad it was. The the writing was atrocious. The art was ugly as hell. It's just it was bad. So, I'd say it's one of the wokest games ever. Uh, but Dustborn has abysmal player numbers on release day. Can't imagine why. And you'll find out why on the next exciting episode of Dragon Ball Z. Uh, Red Thread Games recently re released game Dustborn, which has been described as the wokest game ever. Um, it's not even hit over 100 concurrent players on its release day. Think of it's on Steam for like 30 bucks. I was gonna buy it just to play it, but I'm not spending $30. I'm not. So if any of you want to be kind enough to donate $30 and I'll play it, but I'm not spending $30 of my own hard earned money to pay play this crap. Maybe if it goes on sale and it goes down to like, I don't know, five bucks, then I'll play it. But until then, nope. <clears throat> I thought it'd be a great way to get a good laugh in experience the gameplay and be able to just tear it to shreds while I play it. Um think about how much how many people are on Steam. One hundred concurrent players. That's terrible. Uh <clears throat> so you ready for this? This is where they say they got the inspiration from. Back in July, following the release of its, the game's trailer, a representative for the game conducted an interview with PSU and confirmed the entire game was spawned, or wait for it, out of protest against Donald Trump being elected president of the United States in 2016. Yeah. Don't, I hope you guys didn't hurt your eyes too much, because I'm sure they rolled so fucking fast. 
You're like, are you fucking kidding me? These people have wasted whatever money they had to make this game. And they wasted it all because, oh, evil Cheeto, uh, racist, uh, World War II man, literal incarnation of the devil, hurt my feelings. The representative was asked, what were some of the inspirations during the early days of making the game? Well, we know them. Orange Man Bad hurt our feelings because the TV told me he was a bad person, and so I didn't question anything. I just believed that he was a bad person, despite everything that was coming out at the time was easily debunked. But no, I didn't want to do any of my research, and I just believed everything that ABC, NBC, MSNBC, CNN... Washington Post, Huffington Post, and Reuters, everything, whatever they said, I believed, because I'm not a free thinker, and I just believe everything that the news tells me. And if they said that Donald Trump was a racist, well, I believe he was a racist. If he said that, oh, <laughs> there were fine people on both sides, despite the fact that I've been debunked, all you had to do is watch the clip. I'm not going to watch that clip. Why would I watch it when the news is supposed to be giving me the honest truth? Why would I go back and see if they're manipulating us in any kind of way? Which they were. But nope. No. Nope. News didn't want to show the full context of the clip. Nope. They just picked the fine people on both sides clip show. He responded, for us, it's always... It always begins with the characters in the world, followed by the narrative. We generally have an idea of genre, setting, mood, and tone, who the protagonists are, and then we build the game around that. Art direction, game mechanics, engine, specific features, all of that follows the world, the story, and most importantly, the characters. This is, that's very different to how some studios operate, but Red Thread is first and foremost a storytelling studio. We tell stories using game mechanics and interactivity. And we try to do something fresh and different with each game we develop. Still, we wanted Dustborn to be an evolution of the work that we did with Dreamfall Chapters, a third-person uh, third adventure with a strong cast of diverse characters in a vibrant, deep, and original world with some adventure game mechanics and a lot of branching dialogue and stories. But this time we wanted to include in co include combat action with a narrative twist that stays true to our storytelling heritage. Ooh, he added. There is a bunch of features connected to the idea of weaponized words and how words have the power to change the world. Weaponized words. Because these people think that words are literal violence. Just because you have your tender fifis hurt because someone used the wrong pronoun, that doesn't mean it's violence. These people have full-blown mental breakdowns if you use the wrong pronoun. Instead of a normal person, I mean, I've got long hair. You know how many times from behind I've been called ma'am? You think, like, I'm working into Ingalls and, you know, I'm what doing whatever in the aisle... And a little old lady like, excuse me, ma'am. You think I just get down on that floor and have a breakdown, start crying about, oh, they misgendered me. No, you get the fuck over it. These people are a bunch of fucking pussies. Next, the representative revealed that the game was inspired by the election of evil Cheeto Man. The idea behind Dustborn settings and characters were also influenced by a series of political events that deeply affected us all, beginning in the summer of 2016 and continuing until, well, today. Affecting us all? No, just the weak-willed pussies like you. The ones who sat there and believed everything. The ones who, <clears throat> you know, they came out and said, oh, he's racist, he's this, he's going to start World War III, he's going to, you know, press the nuclear button, he's going to kill everyone, he's going to throw people in camps, he's going to kill, uh, you know, kill people he doesn't like. Did any of that happen? 
No. And yet, this is you. This is what you motherfuckers look like when consuming it. You're like, um, nom, 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 nom. You were just eating it all up without even questioning it. No wars. He did nothing that the left said that he was going to do. And yet, you all lived in fear of this man. Even now, you claim that he's going to somehow do these things that you claimed he was going to do the first time. And he didn't fucking do. Oh, he's going to start World War III. Huh. Funny, no war started under him. But you want to know who, where wars have started? Under the current administration. But sure, keep living in fear of Orange Cheeto Man. Because the, the TV told you to. Or TikTok rather because that's where most of these people get their fucking news from is from tiktok well tiktok said he was an evil racist and he was going to blow up people and put people in concentration camps and he was going to start world war three and uh where'd you hear that i heard it on tiktok go fuck yourselves as game developers we want to tell a story that felt relevant and the, uh, thematically timely with a cast of characters that could more accurately represent our player base. Yeah, all 100 of them. And the setting, and to hopefully have some positive impact on the world. Yeah, I'm sure those 100 people were just blown away by the stellar gameplay and storytelling. In addition to being an entertaining game. Entertain. Oh! Oh, 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 oh. As for what the game is about, the representative said, it's about a lot of things, but it's mostly about keeping hope alive in the face of adversity, maintaining friendships in spite of... Oh, you mean coming from the same side who, who dropped friends and family because they voted for Donald Trump? Oh yeah, you know, that kind of connections and, you know, in spite of conflict... Oh yeah, that? Where you would cut off... Uh, family and friends because they voted uh, in a way that you didn't agree with. Oh, yeah. Once again, showing that the side of love and tolerance are the least loving and tolerant. And about the awesome and terrifying power of words because you're a bunch of fucking pussies and if you're misgendered, you have a breakdown. It's literal genocide. It's also a story about being different, being an outsider, and being on the run from people who hate what you are. <sighs> We're not going to get into that. Because then I really will lose my shit. And robots, let's not so base all of them. They're all fucking robots. They're all fucking NPCs. Just like the people making this fucking game. Orange man, bad. Orange man, bad. We hate orange man, bad. Orange man, racist. You are the fucking robots. You are the NPCs. That is why people call you NPCs, because you are exactly what we say, or not even we, what people say. You just... Without thinking, you just say the same lines. Orange man, bad. Racist. Misogynistic. YouTuber Smash JT reacted to the trailer. Uh, blah blah blah. That uh, that's what this game bases is uh is premise upon. Words are used as weapons and have the power to change minds, and this is used politically to push the agenda with the game. This picture says it all. Later in the video. He questioned, how many people are going out of their way to pay, the, pay to play this woke garbage? Well, apparently only 100. Uh, wait, three hours after the game became available for purchase to purchase on Steam, it has not yet had over 100 concurrent players. As of writing, writing the game's current peak is 72 players. For comparison, Dreamfall Chapters had an all-time peak of 1,700 concurrent players in 26, June 2016, two years after the game released on Steam. Um, when it was released in October 2014, it had a peak current of 1,300. And yeah, there you go. <laughs> Love it. Looking forward to voting for Trump also.
not just dead on arrival, more like after five weeks. Everything woke turns to shit. Uh, we're sorry, Gwen Stacy. Even you couldn't save this game. Even you and your your plucky attitude and personality, even you couldn't save this game. Yeah, it's just... They had money. These people had either money, you know, whatever, how they made their money. And they thought they would spend that money making a game because of Orange Man Bad. Knowing full well that this game was not going to be a hit with everyone. That it's going to be a small, very niche group of people. People who look like this and think the same way the developers do. And when it fails, what's going to happen? They're going to come out and say, you're racist, you're homophobic, you're transphobic, you're misogynist, and all because they decided that this was what they wanted to do. Because of that. Because of that. So, remember, when this game fails, and it's already failed, remember... It's not their fault for making it based on the stupid fucking premise because Donald Trump hurt their feelings. No, it's your fault because you're a racist, misogynistic homophobe and you don't kiss your grandma goodbye when she leaves. This is why activists should not be in gaming or anything. If you want to do your activist bullshit, go do, go do what you people normally do. Go out and fucking protest. Don't fucking keep putting your bullshit into these games and into movies and comics because this is what happens you created a terrible product that only 72 to 100 people have played so even if you had a uh a total of like ten thousand dollars uh to use to make this game you didn't even break even you're not even anywhere close to getting that ten thousand dollars back congratulations Congratulations, you picked political activism over making a good game that everyone wants to play. These are the people we keep talking about. So when we make these videos, these are the kinds of people that we are talking about. People who made a game because they were mad at Donald Trump. So people can stop acting like it doesn't happen. Stop acting like it doesn't fucking exist. Stop acting like we're being... Uh, over dramatic. This is the type of game we are talking about. These, this developer, these developers, they, these are the kinds of people we have been talking about who pull, put their political agenda ahead of a good fucking story, ahead of good characters, ahead of good gameplay, and they'd rather push their fucking agenda than make a good game that will make them money. You make a good game, the money will make itself. But no, we can't have that here in current day. Everything's got to be fucking political narrative. Every fucking time. And then when it fails, you're the ones going to get blamed. You're the ones who are going to get blamed because, oh, you don't like strong female characters. You don't like black women. You don't like your transphobe. You're... Every fucking time. Go on Twitter or whatever. I guarantee you, you're going to see people what well if you don't like this game well you're just a homophobic racist misogynistic transphobe and this and that and every time without fail without fucking fail activists need to get the fuck out of fandoms games po um comic books movies just stop just get the fuck out anyway I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm sorry about the eye rolling. I'm sure you guys all did. Current day. This game was made by a bunch of people who think that words are literal genocide and have full-blown mental breakdowns if you call them the wrong pronoun. And they were so upset about Donald Trump. Just 
that they made spent money wasted money making a game for less than 100 people tds is real seek help anyway that's gonna do it for me you guys know the drill i'll see you guys later bye guys